So Gary Tonin is back on the show. He joins us today. Uh, he is, I want to say fighting. He's uh, in a grappling tournament with um, Ty Rotolo coming on 157. Uh, Gary, thanks for joining me, man. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Just got up for work and navigating Baton Rouge traffic, and it's no fun. Um, yeah. So your last fight was for the title against Tom Lee. I'm going to dive right into the bad stuff, and we're going to get to the good stuff. Um, my first question is, how close was that leg lock? Well, so I definitely popped his ankle. Um, yeah. But I, it's not something that I would have expected a person uh, in a title fight to tap to. So it was... It did damage, similar mm -hmm. to you know somebody throwing a punch and it doing damage and not knocking somebody out. Um, but I don't think it was like uh, I don't think I had him in a catastrophically bad situation to the point where you didn't really have much of a choice. You know, there's certain leg leg entanglements and certain leg locks and things that you do and a certain degree of tightness that you might feel in a particular submission where it's the consequences of not tapping are going to be very very bad and sometimes. When you get into a leg lock exchange, whatever the case may be, the consequences of tapping are just, ah, you know, get a couple pops in your ankle and like it's going to be a little swollen the next day. It's nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was tight for sure, but not to the degree of which it was going to stop the fight. I don't think, you know, some athletes are a little bit more gun shy than others in the sense that uh, that might be the wrong word, but um, in the sense that like maybe they'll just tap right away. Uh, as right. soon as you put something in because they're afraid of the consequences, because, you know, like I said, sometimes it can be bad. Um, and other people have a little bit better sensitivity. Some people understand, like, have been in enough leg, leg, leg entanglements to know, like, what's very dangerous and what's only a little bit dangerous. You know, me, for example, there's certain positions that I might be consider taking breaks in given, given certain circumstances. Um, and other ones where I'm like, yeah, hell no. Like, for example, if somebody had a fully extended knee bar uh, and I can't, like, do anything to loosen up the pressure, like, I'm tapping to the fully extended knee bar. There's no fucking way. Right. I mean, right. it's just, it's going to do way too much damage. Whatever, whatever is going to happen after that, first of all, I'm probably barely going to be able to fight afterwards. Like, you know, yeah. God knows what the long-term consequences, there's way too many consequences. So no way, you know, an outside heel hook where somebody only really kind of has my ankle and I don't really feel too much deep pressure. Uh, I consider letting that go, especially in a title fight, you know? So, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you live and you learn now. That's your first loss in the MMA. Do you find that the loss stings any more or worse than like when you, I mean, you, you hardly ever lose in, in jujitsu, but when you do, is, is, it, is it kind of a similar feeling and you kind of have an idea of where to go from there? Um, yeah. So here I, I've mentioned this a couple times now in, in some interviews, but I'll, I'll try to give it a different of a take as I can. Um, yeah. Basically, um, it was a lot less impactful than I, I built it up to be in my head. Really? Um, okay. Well, I wouldn't even necessarily. Yeah. Well, so I didn't really know what to expect because um, I didn't know what to expect because like, like you mentioned, like I've lost in jujitsu before, but it's just a very different thing. MMA, like the consequences are much more severe and we're talking about right. like, you know, brain damage and things potentially in certain situations and a lot more eyes are on you, you know, when you're watching things, especially for a title fight. Right. Um, but yeah, man, I honestly think both uh, in, in all aspects, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, things weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. I'd never gotten knocked out prior to that point in competition or out of competition. And I imagine mm -hmm. that to be physically more impactful. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that all knockouts are this way. Uh, you know, right. some people who have certain knockouts and, and experience very severe concussion symptoms. They're vomiting, you know, they're very dizzy and they have a lot of problems. Uh, for me, it really wasn't an issue. Like, uh, I would say about an hour after the fight, I felt like a hundred percent, you know, uh, yeah. maybe a little bit of a sore jaw tops it was the only right. thing I really feel or only thing I really felt, um, immediately afterwards, of course, you know, disoriented and all that shit. But, um, yeah, it, it, it was very, very short term impact in terms of physical health. Um, and then in terms of, uh, you know, I guess like mental, emotional, depending upon how the way that you look at it. Uh, -huh. uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get back in there. Like right after it was over, like I didn't, I didn't have like a moment that I was worried that I might have where I'd be like, Oh man, like maybe should I do this anymore? Or like, do I really right. want to do this? You know, because I, I had mentioned this in several interviews leading up to 
you know, me eventually getting an opportunity to fight for the title, uh, you know, maybe my third fight, my fourth fight, whatever the case may be, you know, people would ask me about, you know, my thoughts on MMA versus jujitsu and all these things. And, and I would tell people, I'm like, Hey guys, keep in mind, I only know what winning feels like right now. <laughs> you know, like I literally have never lost in this thing. I've never experienced real hardship yet. So yeah. like the perspective on the sport is a little skewed because until you experience some hardship in the sport, like it's all sunshine and fucking rainbows, right? Like, Oh yeah. Right. What do I think about MMA? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I fucking beat people up and I fucking make money. Like, of course it's great. You know what I mean? Like, of course, right, that's exactly. What I think. But now I get knocked out and it's like, oh, well, does your perspective stay the same? You know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows anymore. There's some fucking consequences, right? So, um, so I'm a big nerd. I'm a big nerd and I love Star Wars. And Emperor Palpatine told Anakin to understand the force. One must know all of its aspects, not just the dogmatic view of the Jedi. Yeah. There you go, man. Uh, I definitely Palpatine's think that, deep. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's fitting, man. Um, it's... it's 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 really it's really hard to have a full perspective on something until you really experience adversity and uh you know i experienced a little bit of adversity my previous fight i got kneed in the face pretty hard that was that was bad maybe one of my fights i had a little trouble leg locking a guy but like minor adversity right you know, this is not this is major adversity here you know getting knocked out in a title fight in a very short period of time is that's a pretty big deal yeah. Um, so I didn't know how I was going to feel about it, but honestly, like, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get back in there. Still feel the same way now. Um, I don't, I didn't lose any passion for, for doing the sport on any level or practicing it. Like, you know, I'm back at practice, I'm doing my thing and, and I still like it. Um, so, I mean, who knows, maybe that'll change at some point if this happens more in the future, but for right now, yeah. like I still, I'm still into it. So, uh, yeah, overall, man, it was less impactful on me in every way than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm obviously That's, not happy about the result. Right. I'm stoked that I got fucking knocked out. Certainly like that, certainly in a title fight, all these things, but, um, all things considered, it, it just wasn't as bad as I thought it was. going to be. Right. Right. Well, that's good. I'm happy that you still want to, to fight. Cause I enjoy watching you fight too. And I'm enjoying watching you, um, get better standing up too. last, last question on this, this whole time league. I want to get to the grappling section of it. Um, John's Instagram post made me simultaneously feel bad for you feel good for you and feel good for Tan, and feel bad for Tan. it it was i'm gonna be honest with you i don't even know what he i don't think i ever read it i don't it was a mission report (laughs) it was a mission report it was crazy but he was like just talking about you know the 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 thing of a loss and all that um Mm -hmm. how how's john been helping you um in this loss you know the game plan wise, the mental aspect of it, because, uh, you know, obviously he's going to go over it with a fine tooth comb and all that. What's he done um, specifically on this, uh, this loss, I guess, to help you become a better fighter? Oh uh, yeah. We just kind of went back and work and talked about it and workshops, like, you know, ideas as to, you know, uh, what went wrong and what we could do better in the future. And, you know, what my mindset was going into that moment and everything. And, um, yeah, I mean, so we, you know, we, we did, we did our, what we were supposed to do. We, we went back and, and looked at, you know, what we could change about the result. You know, some things you can change, some things you can't, you know, um, sometimes, you know, you're just going to get caught with something, you know, and I think the degree right. that exists in MMA, um, you know, I just had a, a guy who I work with quite a bit, Andre Feely, um, yeah. he just fought recently and I think he threw like a check hook or a left hook or something and then fucking got caught over the top by a wild punch dropped. And like, I'll tell you right now, man. I mean, I don't really know as much about his opponent to be fair, but I know this. I know that 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 guy is extremely talented striker. Extreme. I mean, extremely talented mixed martial artists, but specifically in striking, extremely talented, very creative, like really knows what he's fucking doing on a, on a level yeah. that most people don't. And then, you know, I mean, maybe I'm not as qualified to say that cause I'm not a high level striker, whatever the case may be, but I've been in a room with a lot of really good guys. You know, we have George St. Pierre that comes in. That's fucking yeah. mixed martial artists. It's like, you know, I, I'm, I've been around enough to know like what somebody who's exceptional looks like, you know, maybe I don't yeah. have all the keys to get there myself yet. But, um, but I know what something exceptional looks like and that guy's exceptional. And, you know, when I look at something like that happen, um, I go, oh yeah, that's right. There's a little randomness going on in the sport. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yep, definitely. And, and like, I know it's, 
I, I'm sure he won't say that to himself. You know what I mean? In the same way that no. I would say that to myself about my fight, because there's a certain part of you like that, that you, you know, in, in your mind, if you, if you say something like that, you're basically like, hmm, it, di- it diminishes the level of responsibility that you have and, and, and the control right. I believe that you have in, in a given, I don't want to, I don't want to walk, I don't want to walk around in a world where I believe that I have no control over any outcomes. I mean, that's ultimately, right. that's what we're, what we're working towards here when we're doing martial arts. It like, we're taking something that's an extremely chaotic, chaotic thing like fighting, and we're trying to make it more calculated. We're trying to give us our, the greatest percentage chance of, you know, not only surviving the confrontation, but being successful in the confrontation. Right. Where as, as normally it would just be total random chaos, maybe maybe certain attributes would help you one way or the other, but there there would be no rhyme or reason b- behind what you know what somebody winning or losing for the most part. Um, so we try to take as much of that out of it. So I'm sure he's going to go back and be like, okay, here's the things that I could have done, and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm sure there are things that he could have done better. Um, but I I think I think there was a degree of of like ah fuck man, he just got caught in a, with a fucking heavy punch in a bad spot. Yeah when, when throwing a punch of his own and that's just going to happen sometimes. Um, you know, so you know, there's a degree of that, that I think played a role in our fight in my fight as well. Um, but I do, I certainly look at, there's many, many things that I think I could have done better that I'm not necessarily guaranteeing that I, that the same outcome wouldn't have happened, but at the very least giving me a better chance at success, you know? Right. I love it. I love it. So let's, let's go ahead and move on to the grappling section. Um, because yeah, so this, um, this tournament coming up for, for, for one, um, it's got a lot, you got the Rotulo brothers, you got you, Shinya, Yoki, and a whole bunch of great, great grapplers in this man. Um, were you quick to say yes to, to competing in this? Was this something that like piqued your interest or was it kind of like, yeah, why not? It was very random. Uh, I had no idea yeah. they were thinking of this happening or if they even signed those kids. Like I literally had no idea. They just like sent me a bout agreement one day, basically. Uh, I mean, maybe they sent me a, maybe they sent me a message saying like, Oh, Hey, do you want to compete against one of the Rotolas before the bout agreement? But that was pretty yeah. much it. And uh, they, they originally, the match was supposed to be against Cade and they changed it to tie after I had mm-hmm. already signed. Um, I don't know what happened if they forgot which twin was, which no, nobody really gave me an explanation there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But it is what it is. No big deal. Um, you know, he's ties a little bit better and a little bit heavier. It's, it is what it is. It's very similar matches. Um, but uh, yeah, man, uh, it wasn't. So it was on my radar years ago um, that one of them called me out and I, we tried to set up the match um, when that was happening. Cause I want to say it was, it was somewhat during COVID and like I maybe yeah. I wasn't fighting, I, you know, there wasn't a fight ready and scheduled at the time or something. So I was like, Oh yeah, you know, I'll take that grappling match. And then I think a couple things happened. Like maybe he got hurt a few times or something like that. Um, so I wasn't sure if like he was serious about it or not, because I felt like I gave him the opportunity to do it and mm-hmm. uh, it, it didn't seem to, to work out, but you never know, man, what people are going through. So, um, so yeah, uh, th- I'm, I'm kind of happy that it eventually came to fruition and, and it's actually kind of better that it happened now than it did back then, because I think they've cemented, you know, and Ty has cemented his name. I always speak it as they, because, you know, everybody yeah. kind of. Because they're together. They, they got yeah. joint Instagram and everything. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. but, but I think that uh, Ty has cemented himself uh, even more so than he did back then uh, as one of the best in the world. So, uh, you know, it's even better to take the match now than it would have been to take the match then. Um, but yeah, I basically just went to my coaches and, you know, I went to John and Gordon and was just like, hey guys, you know, what do you think? And they're just like, yeah, good. Sounds good. You know, let's do this. So if you want to do it, you know, basically if you want to do it, like, let's do this. That's, that's, that's all it really took on my end. Um, and like, uh, I've, I've mentioned this a few times, you know, they're, they're some of the best in the world. And, uh, those are the kind of matches that I want to have. So, right. Yeah. It's crazy though. Those kids came like, I don't want to say they came out of nowhere, but they got really good, really fast. Why do you think that is? Is it, is that a information thing or is that just, they're born for the sport or is it a combination of both? Uh, I think that, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know everything about their, their history. I don't know if I would say that they got really good, really fast because they've been, I'm pretty sure they've been doing this shit their whole life. So yeah. I, I think it more had to do with a coming of age than it did having to do with them right. getting really good very fast. I think it had more to do with like, all right, like these guys are kind of becoming men now, you know, like they, they kind of have like a more uh, filled out body and, 
you know, they're, they've kind of come into their own in terms of like their athleticism and all of these sorts of things. pump and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 So they're starting to kind of peak um, or maybe, you know, I mean, at the very least begin the, the process of like, you know, becoming a, you know, like a stronger, you know, uh, male athlete. And uh, mm-hmm. I, that, I think that that play, you know, I think it just, it just took a certain amount of time also just in terms of like the way that our sport works, like you can only be so young and compete at the highest level in our sport, right. like in most aspects, obviously with super fights, it's a little different. Now you can kind of do whatever you want, as long as the organization's willing to let you do it. Um, but in our sport, typically you wouldn't see those kind of matchups against, you know, for example, you don't typically see a 15 year old competing uh, at a high level in our sport too often because uh, you have to be 16 in order to even receive a blue belt or a purple belt. Right. Like in our sport. So typically you wouldn't see a white belt, which would be what a 15 year old would be in our sport competing against, you know, a black belt who's a grown man. So there's a little bit of a barrier there as well, where it's like, man, they may have been as good as they were even sooner, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the access to the level of competition um, that they might have had uh, if the sport was geared a little bit differently um, right. in terms of divisions and that sort of thing. So I think it's a little bit of a, a combination of those two things. Um, but there's no doubt that they're, that they're very good and very talented and, and, and all these things. So, um, yeah. So what's, um, what's your mindset like in the training aspect of this? Uh, you, you've been training, doing MMA pretty much full time, you know. Um, are, you, are you like putting a pause on the mixed martial arts for this tournament and brushing up, getting the rust off and all that? Uh, I'm still trading because you never know what's going to happen. Like I said, fighting's priority. So, you know, I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they're going to try to schedule a short notice fight ever or whatever the case may be. So I got to be ready for anything. Um, yeah. So I'm always still training, but maybe I'm not doing the same, you know, what I, the type of training that I was doing to prepare for Thon is not the type of training that I'm doing now because, you know, there's, there's a certain degree of training that goes into preparing for a five round title fight. So I was doing five rounds of sparring every fucking day. And, uh, yeah. and that's, yeah. a, that's a bit of a stress to put on the body uh, when it's not necessary, when you're not about to enter that type of contest. So, um, you know, I'm sparring and I'm doing my drilling and all that stuff that I normally do for MMA, but I'm not doing it on the same level of intensity um, and level of, um, and quantity uh, perhaps is the right way to put yeah. it as, uh, as what I would have been doing when I was preparing for my title fight. Last question before I let you go, man, how, how, how he's retired. This isn't even about one championship. This is about dream fights and stuff. You okay. as a Brazilian, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert, um, just a master of the sport. How does a Khabib, how do you beat Khabib like on the ground? What is it for, from, a, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu aspect? Otherwise, like yeah. everybody's like knock them out. But what if, what if it's like you fighting them? How does that happen? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's funny that you, you know, that people, <laughs> people's answer is knock them out, but like, not too many people were able to do that, were they? <laughs> so, McGregor, Gaethje, and Poirier, three of the hardest hitters, and he walked yeah, right through them. So, so yeah, that's not the path. Him. Yeah, exactly. He went up against – well, I'm not necessarily saying it's not the path. I'm just saying easier said than done, right? Like, yeah, it's for like sure. It's just like, oh, man, striking is his kryptonite. It's like, well, you know, maybe he, he himself is not the greatest striker, but he, ha- he understands enough to nullify – other great strikers to the point where it's difficult for them to do the damage that maybe they're able to do to other people. And that in itself is a quality that makes it so that like, Oh, just knock them out. is not like, you know, not an the easy answer. And I'm sure that's kind of how Nick McGregor felt. He's like, Oh yeah, it fucking sucks at striking. So I'm just going to beat him up, beat his ass. But you know, right. (laughs) The pressure and like all these other things that, that, that come with Khabib's game change things quite a bit when it comes to that. But anyway, uh, Oh, shoot. Did I lose you for a second? Yeah, you're good. All right. So um, what was I going to say? So as far as from a grappling perspective, a couple things. Uh, One, he's considerably bigger than me, but that doesn't – Right. That's not too different from a lot of the opponents that I've had in the past. Let's let's just just take a size parity. Let's let's, let's say we can, like, pump you up. No, sure, sure, sure. But I'm just saying – I'm just saying he's quite a bit bigger than me. So that's something that I have to deal with, right? Like the, the strength and physicality are definitely a little bit of an issue. So um, that would be, that would be a storm that would be uh, somewhat more difficult to weather. But like I said, it's not something that I haven't done before. Um, some aspects of what he does play into a dangerous submission grapplers game because 
anybody who's willing to push forward and engage in body to body contact is going to make it easier for somebody who's a submissions expert to get those submissions off. The hardest person to grapple is somebody who doesn't want to grapple. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Khabib wants to grapple. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not like Khabib doesn't want to grapple. He just wants to grapple in a little bit of a different way than I want to grapple. You know, yeah. he would, he would prefer to grapple in a way where he can punch me in the face more often than anything. And he usually uses submissions as like a icing on the cake more than he uses them as a bread and butter. Like it's mercy killing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like submissions to him are like, all right, after I batter your face for fucking three rounds and then, you know, you, you give up your arm or you give up your neck or whatever the case may be. Right. Okay, maybe I'll submit you or maybe I'll keep punching your face. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, I've actually seen him. He, he, I think there was a brief period of time. I can't remember what fight it was. I, he was on his back momentarily or something. I think I saw him throw uh -huh. up a triangle or something. And, and so off of his back, I actually, you know, we don't get to see it too often. A lot of people might believe that like he's super weak there. Uh, I don't think he's, I don't think he's weak there either. I'd like to believe that he, he also has a decent bottom game. Um, so yeah. I don't think that that's necessarily a hole either. Um, I think that most likely, uh, most likely leg locks would be the easiest way to Whole guard, to bro. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you wouldn't even, but the thing is you wouldn't even need to, he's going to no, take you down right. anyway. So exactly. What's, what's the point? Let him take you down and then try to enter his legs yeah. as he takes you down. That would probably be the way to go about it. Um, but yeah, man, um, I think, I think probably leg entanglements would be the way to deal with him, uh, best, um, simply because with, for most guys, even, you know, even good grapplers in MMA, it tends to be a deficit of theirs to be high level right. at, at uh, leg locks. So it would probably be the, the biggest discrepancy in skill in grappling, uh, between me and him would probably be in leg entanglements. Um, when it comes to other aspects of the sport, arm bars, triangles, guillotines rear naked it's like these are all things most people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in their regular training but for some sure. of the people that are high level at leg locks it's a little it's getting to be more of a mainstream thing now but it's a little bit more few and far between some mma got mma guys won't even tolerate it like they won't they're right. not even interested in you know I've, I've had buddies of mine that went to go train with somebody that does mma and and they start to put an ashigarami on the guys like whoa, whoa, whoa what do you think you're doing buddy stop right there yeah you right know? right like they won't even yeah. they won't even tolerate it in their training I'm not necessarily saying that's what Khabib does. I've never seen him work with somebody who's a legs expert. So I have no Nobody's idea. Nobody's ever gone for his legs. Yeah, but that would be my thought process. My thought process would be like, how, how many times can I get an opportunity at these guys, this guy's legs? And that's probably what I would be trying to do for most of the fight. Um, but I also wouldn't, it's not like I wouldn't engage in other aspects of jujitsu. I never, I'm never really a big fan of tunnel vision um, yeah. because I think when you, I think when you have tunnel vision and you only want to do one thing, you become way too predictable and it makes it harder to do that one thing. So even if my goal would be to eventually leg lock him, I'd try to threaten him with other skills prior right. to eventually leg locking him because it, it's just too obvious. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Gary's going to go for the legs. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Well, look, I appreciate you coming on again and um, I'll be pulling for you this upcoming tournament. Uh, any instructables coming out or anything like that in time soon? I'm working on a new thing with BJJ Fanatics. I think I'm going to like redo it or add more to it though. So uh, be on the lookout for that, but it probably won't be out for another few more months. Uh, but anything on BJJ Fanatics, uh, thank you for any support that anybody decides to give me. Um, but uh, I also have a gym out in, uh, in uh, North Brunswick, New Jersey called Gary Tone and Jiu Jitsu. Um, so if you're around the area in Jersey and you want to stop by Chris Sa Sadbanal, the guy that I do all my instructionals with, he's been my, um, you know, my best student for, for years, um, is a really great teacher and he's out there, uh, you know, teaching at that school full time. I occasionally stop by and teach there as well. So, um, you know, be great to have you as part of the team or even just to stop by for a visit. Thanks Gary. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, take it easy, brother. Yes, sir. Take care. Bye-bye.